friends, it's T, and I'm back. I'm going to do a, a quick recap of this video. I'm not going to look at the whole thing, just a small section here, what this lady's talking about. And uh, I'm going to react to it. It's going to be interesting. I don't know. It's, uh, let's see, it's called, uh, Are You a Fast Metabolizer of Omega Fatty Acid? Lessons from a Legend. Ooh, a legend. And the channel is called um, Dr. Kara Fitzgerald. FXMD longevity and epigenetics. Epigenetics, okay. Olive oil and saturated fat. And they didn't pay any attention to the essential fatty acids, specifically omega-6 and omega-3. In terms of the fat studies, you got saturated fat and olive oil. Well, when I went back and looked at the data, I was determined to find out exactly what was going on? Because I noticed the seven country study at that time, it included um, Greece, Japan, Poland, Italy, the then Yugoslavia, Finland. And the people in Crete had the lowest rate of heart disease and they lived the longest. But after the lowest heart disease and they lived the longest. They still had heart disease and they lived the longest <laughs> okay um, the reason why they didn't live to their full potential is most likely because they're eating some fake toxic food and she's gonna reveal it because I I already know it's hundred percent none of these people are eating their natural diets hundred percent okay they're mixing these toxic plants and I'm, like I said I didn't watch this video yet because I just stopped it around there. They were talking about omega sixes, but I already know. After the Cretans, you would expect either the Yugoslavians who are on the that included Croatia on the Adriatic and Italy to be the second one if the factors were the way they visualized them. Sure. Um, olive oil and saturated fat and fresh fruits and. I like how she says olive oil and saturated fat. Well, isn't olive oil saturated fat? Do you mean uh, do you mean saturated fat from animals or saturated fat from plants, which is disgustingly bad for you? Vegetables, but the people that followed the um, the the, the Cretan data were uh -huh. the Japanese. So I then looked to see, and there were of course thousands of miles apart. I then decided to decide to figure out what was a common factor between the Japanese and the people of Crete in their diet or other factors that could account for these similarities in terms of having low cardiovascular disease and long survival. Yes, low cardiovascular disease, yet there's still cardiovascular disease and long survival what is consider what's long to her? What's considered long? I know. Centenarian, hundred years. What? Seventy, eighty? They live between seventy to a hundred years of age, so that's considered long. Yeah. The reason why they're living so short to a hundred is because the Japanese are eating rice, which has arsenic, so they're slowly poisoning themselves with arsenic. Yeah. And the Mediterranean people are eating toxic plants. That's a, that's a given for sure. That's the reason why their lifespan is 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 cut short, and they look like a prune when they die. Yeah, they deteriorated faster than they aged. And in order to do that, I had to go back and look at all the data they had collected. Yeah, she has to go back and look at all the data. Yes. And I noticed that they had ignored a lot of factors that were very important. What's uh, that? What's that factor that they should have? They should have eaten those toxic things. Okay. When they translated the food frequency questionnaires, they put down fresh fish rather fresh than fresh fish. In, in the beginning of this video, this woman here with the blonde hair, she's like, "Yes, uh, fish. Yeah, it's very good, omega three. And then she goes, "Oh, the mercury in it." Yeah, this is the thing by the government. They want to they want to scare you. People believe whatever you tell them. They're like, there's mercury in fish. Ah, and 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 meat, beef gives you cancer and diabetes and disease and all that. 
So those are two facts. First, they say they did tests on people eating fish, and they said that fish is extremely healthy for you. And then you get people like this, they're going to tell you, well, there's mercury in there. So what is it? Is it healthy for you or does it have mercury and it's bad for you? See what I mean? There, this is such ridiculous shit. People, people buy into this crap. There's no mercury in there that's going to fucking destroy you fish. And they wouldn't be selling it on the, on the shelf. Because mercury is highly toxic. You'd be dead. Number two, beef is, not, is, is neither toxic nor does it give you diabetes or cancer. That too is ridiculous. Raw meat. And fish. And fresh fish in Crete. They only have it along the seashore. Yeah. The rest of the island did not have refrigeration at that time. So they yeah, fresh fish. You, when I lived in Mexico, they would pull the fish right out of the ocean and make it there right in front of you on the beach. There's these huts. The people make they make food there. And they did not pay any attention to the fish in the seven countries study. So when I went back and in detail, I examined their data and then I collected my own data and I decided to figure out in detail what they were eating. I found out that the people in Crete ate a lot of fish because they ate um, a lot or actually every day they would have sardines. Uh -huh. On Fridays they would have herring, which are high doses of omega-3 sardines and herring there you go oh they had high dosages will they be dead already because i'm sorry the government or somebody says out there that there's a mercury in there <laughs> at the acids yeah they ate a lot of green leafy vegetables on a day there you go there's the problem where their lifespan has been cut short lady the leafy green vegetables the toxic leafy green vegetables they've been eating daily basis and particularly wild plants. So when I... Wild plants, oh my God, right out of the forest, even worse, yes, okay. Very toxic. Looked wow. at the composition, I found out that the wild green leafy vegetables are full of omega-3 fatty. Yeah, think about it. Look at this woman on the left, look at her face. It looks completely deteriorated, like a prune sucked in. I wanna know why? Because she can't stop eating these leafy green vegetables and stuff. and. Whatever the hell she's talking about there, and fruits and vegetables and everything, they have destroyed her because they are anti-nutrient, and you need the flow of nutrients, which is, only comes from meat and uh, seafood, raw. Raw seafood, raw meat. That's it. And you need a lot of it. You need an overdose on it like crazy. Yes, to build up your body. Acids. So all of a sudden then, I found things that they had not even considered in the seven country study. Sure. And then I went and looked over the Japanese yeah. data. And you know, the Japanese eat fish every day. So the common factor was not the saturated. Yes, the Japanese eat fish every day, but they also eat rice every day. Because you go to a sushi bar, Japanese sushi bar, you see the sushi with rice all the time. And they also eat seaweed. And then they eat kimchi and a bunch of other weird stuff that's very toxic. They put it there, ginger, kimchi and all that. They put it right there, the condiments with the stuff they eat them. They're very toxic. Yeah, this is ridiculous. In fact, or the olive oil, the common factor where the essential... Olive oil, oil, plant oils are terrible for you. Oh, people are going to say, well, but they're not seed oils. They're from olives. Man, they're from olives. They're the same shit. It's bad for you fatty acids and the fact that they you know that raw milk is so healthy for you it actually they i can't i can't prove it myself but science says that drinking raw milk will actually ex will remove this seed oil wow that's very powerful why doesn't the government allow you to drink raw milk anymore huh, we're not in 1920 this ain't 1947 1920 this isn't 1869 1867 or whatever when they when they developed this or when they started pasteurizing milk because of because of unhealthy practices it, raw milk itself is not dirty or bad for you it's the practices the handling of it is what's dirty but we are in the 20 first century bro we don't we don't need fucking nitrates on our meat anymore we're not going to suffer from botulism and we definitely do not need our milk pasteurized so why are they continually pasteurizing milk and putting nitrates on your meat because they want you to die that's why 
They had plenty. Why is she promoting toxic plants? Oh, because they're long lived. They're eating fish. They're long lived. So we have to shorten their lifespan. How? By feeding them toxic plants. By feeding them fucking arsenic called rice. Of omega 3s, much higher amounts than other populations. Yes, sure, okay. And they had a ratio, it was fascinating, of omega 6 to omega 3 that was 1. Then I what? I don't know, man. This is just crazy. Like, like I said, uh, yeah, okay, omega-6, they're going to say too much omega-6 is not good for you. Yeah, I would, I would agree, possibly, yes. Yeah, I mean, then I moved on uh, to look at the composition then of the, of the egg under where the, the chickens, they fetch their own food. And their egg had a ratio of omega-6 to omega-3, almost one, whereas the USDA egg had a ratio of 20 to 1. So there was another evidence. Well, that's another reason. I had a feeling that our eggs may have a high ratio of omega-6. That's why I'm like... Um, and they say linoleic acid. Linoleic acid, high linoleic acid and omega-6, whatever is not good for you so that's why i try not to eat too much eggs i i eat some eggs but i mostly eat meat and raw fish that's about it and some raw beef that's it bro get it that's it that's it and i make some collagen soups out of these bones i boil the bones down that's about it yeah and, and a few other things well, i all of a sudden then i saw these enormous differences that had been totally ignored and you know, when it's something new, it's not easy for people to accept it right away. But I had very good data. I knew the data. We had brought hard boiled eggs from Greece, from our own farm to NIH. And Norm Salem and I measured them at the NIH. So no one could tell me that these were not true data. So we felt very comfortable in pointing out that throughout evolution human beings evolved on a diet i love this throughout evolution human beings evolved we don't evolve you can adapt to certain things but even then you don't you don't quite adapt to it <clears throat> adapt just means protect protect you from something that's bad your body protects you from something that's bad coming in your body that's what it means adap uh, to adapt she says evolve we never we're not we're not evolving we don't we don't evolve we are the exact same person that we were there and now the only difference is, is we're domesticated because we're not the same humans that lived in nature we don't even know exactly what we look like in nature but we know what we look like in the city we call ourselves modern man that's how we separate ourselves from these so-called uh these so-called uh, people that lived out in nature we say modern man and then whatever neanderthals we call them neanderthals and then we go modern man you mean domesticated man domesticated the difference between neanderthal and domesticated man and then they go well these neanderthals they uh, disappeared they didn't disappear they all became domesticated they all became modern man what we are today <laughs> That's how stupid they are. They don't understand that what domestication is. Yeah, that was balanced. You know? Why doesn't anybody of these scientists ever mention that we've been domesticated? We don't live in nature. We live in the city. <laughs> omega-6 and omega-3 fatty acids. Yeah. And uh, in fact, they had more omega-3s than omega-6 if you go all the way back. What happened in the U.S. food supply is that right after the Second World War, they began to use vegetable oils such as safflower, sunflower, corn oil, cottonseed that were not used before. Yeah, corn oil, cottonseed, these are nasty. They destroy the shit out of you. Or in such high amounts because they had to provide calories to the people yes uh, yes they have to provide calories there so they didn't have to provide nutrients they have to provide calories of course because slaves have to work right they need this these drugs this particular energy to keep you working it's a bad type of energy that slaves you they want to slave you at the end of the second and that's what shortens your lifespan and you die world war so without pe knowing 
what are the effects of the omega-6 fatty acids. They went ahead, they bleached the oils, they made them taste better, they looked good, and they flooded the food supply, both in the US and Europe, with all these oils. So not only we had a deficiency of omega-3s, but we had an excessive amount of omega-6. Yes, success, uh, shorten people's lifespan. They were very, they're very successful, yes, <laughs> doing this. And that's why then you ended up, just think the poor cells being faced with this abnormal ratio, yeah. and they had to respond to the metabolic changes. Mm. So, so this is it. I mean, this is very factual. The metabolic changes. We have to we have to adapt to the metabolic changes by farting, bloating, and getting inflammation, inflammaging in there. Yes. Well, and when you you look at the fact that they had totally ignored the essential fatty acids, to me, it's very hard to explain scientifically. It's just a matter of omitting and not doing accurate research. Yeah, it's not hard to to uh, explain scientifically, uh, even naturally. If you break the laws of nature, then you're going to suffer. You're going to suffer for that, definitely. You're going to pay the price. Yeah, and that's what's happening here. Finally, homemade manjaro. Great research. What a, I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just I'm so grateful to be able to share this. This is extraordinarily pivotal. It's so important. I mean, so I think what you're saying is that, I mean, your, your work brought, was brought to the fore. Eventually it took a while for yes. us to have this, an appreciation of eating fish. I mean, this is. Oh man, these people, this is what I call so so these people are so unnatural. Oh, appreciation for eating fish. The appreciation for eating natural food where we're supposed to be eating out in nature. Oh, yes, because we're so domesticated eating crap all day. <laughs> Something everyone takes like, for I'm just changing physically. My structure of my face has been changing. My body has been changing. Uh, it's going back to normal. It's going back... It's becoming undomesticated because I keep forcing my body to eat natural food. And the more of it I down, the more my body seems to be getting leaner, faster, stronger. My face structure is changing. I look better. My hair grows really fast. My nails grow really fast. Um, it's incredible. I don't even know how to explain it. Hormones are perfect, gut is perfect, liver, kidney working perfectly. My heart beats, my heart, man, off the charts, off the scale. Hormones off the scale, everything. Cholesterol through the roof, bro. Feel amazing. Sleep is amazing. Everything is just fucking amazing. Feel like a teenager, like I'm 16 years old again. It's crazy. Granted, it's so fundamental, but it starts. And I am getting younger, which is really weird. <laughs> yeah. Started with your work, your second investigation on that original yeah. uh, seven country study, yes. deciding to go in there and tease it apart. And then you have that background in genetics. So you're thinking about nutrition and nutritional influence. You're aware from your early work, looking at that prostaglandin um, genetic condition that so you had that. So you had the lens to be able to figure this out. The lens to figure this out. She figured it out. Oh, okay. Bravo. Look you know, how everything came together, though. Yeah, it's extraordinary. It's almost, it's a little, yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting. And, and, and I'll put in the show notes, people, in fact, I'll put into the, sh in the show notes, every paper that we reference. And of course, um, Dr. Simop Lewis's um, books as well. And, you know, again, we've, she's got a beautiful. Anyways, I'm going to cut it there, man. I don't know where else to talk about here. I'll see you in the next video. Tell us you think about that. Like, subscribe, support the channel. This is the reason why their lifespans have been cut short. And they say they're the longest lived, longest lived uh, lifespan cut short. <laughs> see you in the next one. Ciao, friends.